Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Warren, Pennsylvania and our midweek service. Uh, our scripture today comes from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 16. Hello, we're Rusty and Cindy Blodgett from Warren, Pennsylvania on Terra Street here on our deck. And we're happy today to uh, read the scripture from 1 Kings. Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kirith Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kerith Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may be eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. Then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food for every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. I grew up near Lake Mott Park in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Uh, Lake Mott was an early 20th century trolley park. Uh, what you need to know about Lake Mott is that it is home to the oldest operating wooden roller coaster in the world. It's called the Leap the Dips, and when it was built in 1902, it was advertised as an amazing thrill ride that rises an impressive 42 feet into the air with drops of almost 9 feet, an average speed of 10 miles an hour, and a maximum speed of 18 miles an hour. As I grew up and went to Lake Mont each summer, this was my idea of a roller coaster. Yes, I knew there were bigger and faster coasters in other parks, but this was what I was used to. The ups and the downs, the highs and the lows of the ride weren't that big, and I guess I liked it that way. Now, fast forward to August of 1987. Karen and I were married, and we spent several days in Williamsburg, Virginia, for our honeymoon. While there, we went to Bush Gardens, where Karen talked me grudgingly into going on a different type of roller coaster, the Loch Ness Monster. It was a little bigger, uh, a lot higher, and quite a bit faster than what I was used to. In fact, after the ride, I, I was so sick uh, and had to go sit on a park bench that Karen went and found another little girl to ride with her because, as she told the little girl, her husband couldn't take it. I'm also reminded of a story of a, of a man trying to cross the street. He steps off the curb and a car comes screaming around the corner, head straight for him. 
The man walks faster trying to hurry across the street, but the car changes lanes and is still coming at him. And so the guy turns around and he goes back, but the car changes lanes again and is still coming right at him. And by this time, the car is so close, the man is so scared that he freezes, just freezes, stops cold in the middle of the road. The car gets really close, swerves to the last possible moment, screeches to a halt right next to him. Well, the driver rolls down his window. Lo and behold, the driver of the car is a squirrel. And the squirrel says to the man, see, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? See, life is hard. Dealing with the challenges of everyday life isn't always easy, is it? Many of us learn that the hard way. There have been a lot of difficulties as of late, navigating the challenges of the last few months. And we've learned that life isn't always easy. Uh, sometimes it's an illness, a disease. Sometimes it's a family member that's in trouble. Sometimes it is that life just isn't working out the way we had hoped. And for some, it has been one challenge after another, after another, one hurt and heartache stacked upon another. In our own way, we, we thought we knew what a roller coaster was, only to find ourselves seated on a much rougher ride with no idea when it might end. It makes me wonder sometimes if, in fact, it is possible to deal with the roller coaster ride that we call life. And if so, how? Allow me, if you will, uh, to shift gears for just a moment. What do you have that you can or should be sharing with others? It's a primary question for us to consider. A secondary question is, why is it that we should share anything in the first place? But before we answer the first, I'd like to look at the second. I mentioned Lake Mont. That park uh, had a pavilion picnic area where groups would have their annual summer picnics each year, church picnics, co company picnics, and so forth. And of course, when, when we were kids spending a hot summer day at the park, we liked to fill up water balloons and have those battles. Well, anyone who's ever filled up a, a balloon with water knows that as you hold the lip of the balloon under the faucet, the balloon will only hold so much water before it eventually explodes. Similarly, a brown paper grocery bag is designed to hold and carry groceries, but if you keep putting too many items or things that are too heavy into it, sooner or later, it rips apart. In a very real sense, I believe it is possible for our lives to be ripped apart if we are only receivers and takers in this world and not givers and sharers also. But the world is filled with selfish, greedy people, you say. And you're right. For every person who, who gives you a wave when you let them merge in traffic, there is one who offers another hand gesture because you didn't do it fast enough. We all know selfish people that just look out for themselves and don't seem to care so much for anyone else. And the sad reality is that we will always have those people in our midst. No, their economic lives may not come to ruin simply because of their greed. And no, their social lives may not be destroyed because of their uncaring attitudes and rudeness. But spiritually, spiritually such persons do run the risk of coming to ruin of ripping apart at the seams like the overstuffed grocery bag. And the spiritually bankrupt man is, is more to be pitied than the financially bankrupt in the eyes of the Lord. Think, if you will, about those persons in your life that helped to shape your faith. What is it that you remember about them? Many things, I'm sure, but one common thread I'm willing to wager that ties them all together is that each one shared something with you or gave something to you, whether it was love or an education or fellowship or camaraderie, encouragement. Each of these persons shared something, and why did they do it? Well, likely because someone else had done the same for them. Why is it that we share with others? Because someone has first shared with us. Why is it that we love others? Because someone has first loved us. 
The story from 1 Kings about Elijah and the widow of Zarephath is a wonderful example of what it means to give. And what happens, in fact, when we give of ourselves. A widow lives with her son. They are very poor and, in fact, have only a little bit of meal in a jar and a tiny bit of oil in a jug. They are so poor and hungry that she indicates that she is preparing to die. Yet Elijah tells her to give him something first, to share what little she has, and God will provide for her. And she does as he tells her to do, and lo and behold, the jar of meal and the jug of oil never go empty. There is enough for her and her household to eat for many, many days. The point of the story is that in sharing, we find a reward, but not exactly the way you might think. The story is not saying that if, if you have $1,000 and give it away, that you'll receive it back and so much more with it. Nor is it saying that simply because we take the time to do nice things for others, that they will repay us with interest. What I think it is saying is that in giving of ourselves to others, even in times of challenge, if we do it in faith, that we are doing what God wants us to be doing, we will be blessed by it. Even when the roller coaster of life is pulling us down and taking us to a place where we do not wish to go, we need to have faith and trust. Haven't you ever done something nice for someone, reached out in love to another, not because you felt you had to, but because you wanted to? And how did it make you feel? Pretty good, didn't it? That's what I'm talking about. When we give of ourselves out of love, we are doing so because that love has ultimately come from God above. Jesus Christ shared his life and love with the disciples and those that followed, and they in turn shared it with still others, and they in turn have shared it down through the ages. I am here today because of parents and teachers and friends who have shared that very same love with me. And you know, they, they didn't do this only in good times. They shared their life's trials and tribulations as well. They shared their experiences, good and bad. They witnessed to me what it was like to be a person of faith while dealing with life and its tough issues, with job loss and illness and death, you name it. I saw them travel the highs and lows of life. And I share my life and my faith with others now, not because someone makes me, but because I need to. One cannot continue to really experience the love of other Christians and do nothing. If, if I did that, I would burst, just like the overfilled water balloon. We share and give because as Christians we must. Now remember that first question I asked, what do you have that you can or should be sharing with others? The answer to that could be many things, your time, your love, your interest, your concern, your finances, your ideas. But, but I, I can think of only one answer that encompasses all of these and so many more, and that is your faith. Somewhere along the line, someone shared their faith in a risen, loving Savior with you. You are called to share it with others. And one last thing that I would like to mention about roller coasters, whether it is a relatively calm ride or a ridiculously scary one. The ride is more fun when someone else is alongside of you. Have you ever been to those uh, amusement parks? They take pictures uh, of you as you're on the ride and they sell them to you as you, as you get off. And I, I doubt that they, they sell many to the people who ride alone. Almost always it is with a friend by their side enjoying the ride. When was the last time you invited another, a friend or a family member, along with you? I'm not talking about necessarily to church, but, but when was the last time you invited another into your life to share your trial or your challenge? When was the last time you invited another into your life because you suspected they were having a rough time 
and needed help, and you wanted to help them through it? When was the last time you invited a friend to come with you to share your life in Christ with them because you knew it helped you enjoy the high points of life even more and deal with the lows in a better way and with a proper attitude? This last weekend, we celebrated Memorial Day a time to remember those who served and died in defense of freedom in this land. But Memorial Day has also become an opportunity to remember all those who have gone before us, those who lived life and shared life, those who enjoyed the highs and dealt with the lows, celebrated the joys and dealt with the challenges. If the lives of those saints lived have shown us anything. It is that knowing Jesus and growing in his love is the most precious and valuable gift we can ever receive. And if we receive, we must also share. And remember the story from 1 Kings, when we share what we have, we are even greater blessed. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for life's joys and even life's challenges and ask that you would give us a sense of peace and a sense of urgency. Peace as we receive your love and an urgency to share it with others. Amen.